This is Jared Horak, and we're back on the road to the 2023 Kentucky Derby in this video, and I'm going to do analysis of the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby for Saturday, April 1st at Oakland Park. Now, I posted some other Oaks and Derby videos on my YouTube channel this week, the Gulf Street Park Oaks, the Florida Derby, uh, and the Fantasy Stakes at Oakland Park. And you can check all of those videos out on my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in full card analysis at, at, um, for my Triple Crown series this year, uh, like I cover every year, you'll find those full cards at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page later this spring. I have a list of products that I'm going to be covering on my sales page right now. So you can you know, go on over there and see which products I'm covering, and they'll be available later this spring at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. Now we'll get into the analysis of this um, Arkansas Derby. And it's a grade one race worth $1.25 million for three-year-olds, a mile and an eighth on the main track, scheduled post time, 7.50 p.m. Eastern time. And in this race, we have a good uh, field size in here. And it looks like a good betting race as well. And number one is Bourbon Bash for trainer D. Wayne Lucas. And this uh, son of City of Light has, has only won for nine lifetimes. So he's eligible for an entry-level allowance race. He does have three seconds and a third place finish. He's 0 for 3 at Oakland Park, and he's hit the board a couple of times at this venue. Now, he graduated a uh, second time out by eight lengths going wire to wire at Saratoga at six furlongs last summer. And he set the pace in his debut at that track as well. Then the hopeful stakes in the slop. He was fifth, beating 24 lengths. Uh, Two-year-old champion Forte won that one. Forte defeated him again in the Breeders' Futurity at a mile on his 16th at Keeneland. This one set the pace, and he weakened, and he was uh, well beaten 12th. He was second in the Bowman Mill when they turned him back in his next start. And then uh, he was in a couple other stakes races in, in sprints. Uh, the Ed Brown stakes, he was uh, sixth. He was third in uh, the Renaissance stakes at six furlongs. And they tried to stretch him back out in his last couple. In an optional claiming race, he stalked, he led, he was second. That was at Fairgrounds on February 4th. And then in the slop last time in the Rebel, he ended up finishing fifth in that 11-horse field from post 10. Now he's had the um, outer post in his last couple, so now he gets the inside post. And I think maybe they want to try to get involved early in here. He did do that earlier in his career. But I do think he's better sprinting. I don't think he wants to go a mile and an eighth. Uh, Interlock Empire is 20 to 1 morning line. This is the son of Classic Empire, and he's lightly raced with four starts with a win and a third. He was well beaten in his debut. Sixth in a 12-horse field, beaten 10 lengths. He was fifth in his second start in a 10-horse field at a mile and a 16th on a wet fast track at Oakland, and then he uh, was third in his next start. Uh, that was an okay effort at a mile, and then last time out at one mile, he rallied from 13 lanes back, and he, he made a big run from post 11 um, in that 11 horse field uh, to win by five lengths. So he's improved his speed ratings in all four starts. He's obviously on the improve for Kenny McPeak, doesn't have any speed at all, and he really gets tested for class in here. Harlow Cap is another one that could impact the pace for trainer Steve Asmussen, this is the son of Justify, and he's done okay in his career, or at least he did when he was with Bob Baffert. He's had four starts with a win and two-thirds. His first three starts were for Baffert, and he was second in his career debut. A spun intended defeated him by more than six lengths, but he was clearly second best after a slow start. They stretched him out from six furlongs to a mile. He battled on the pace, and he finished a second after having a two-length lead. Mr. Fisk beat him there. And then he got his maiden win in his third start at Santa Anita at a mile on a 16th when he got out there and he was able to set the pace and win by more than four lengths. Last time out, he moved to the Asmussen Barn, the grade two risen star stakes. He got caught up in a, a tough pace there and he ended up finishing sixth, beating nine lengths in a 14 horse field. His second start for his current connections and he's one that certainly should be up there on the pace. Since he broke his maiden going wire to wire, that was his best career effort. You would think that that's what they would want to do in here, get him right out to the front. Ricardo Santana Jr. gets aboard for the first time, and he wins races for this barn. Two Eagles River is next. Cloud Computing's the sire for trainer uh, Chris Hartman, and Cloud Computing was a Preakness winner. Uh, five starts for this one, and he's run well all five starts. Two wins, two seconds, and a third. He stalked, and he won in, in the slop in his career debut. That was a nice win at five furlongs. His second career start, he was second by a neck. He stalked, he led, and he just missed there. His third start, he stalked, he got close to the lead, and he was battling, and like he almost won it in the Renaissance Stakes, but he fell a head short in that race. In his last two starts, they stretched him out. Verifying defeated him uh, fairly easily by eight lengths when he finished third on January 14th at one mile. 
and a verifying came back and he had a troubled trip in his next state stake start and then gun pilot was the runner up there and he was the next out winner and two eagles uh, river was the next out winner when he went wire to wire last time out from the inside post just controlling that pace and disarm was the runner up and he came back and he ran a good race finishing second in the louisiana derby now two eagles river had lasix in his last three starts he doesn't have it here he has some quality speed ratings but he did get loose in that last start. I don't think he's going to get loose here. He's going to have to stalk the pace. And um, just based on the speed ratings he earned in his first two routes, when he stalked uh, on January 14th, he didn't have anything left in the stretch. Uh, but when he got to the front last time, he had plenty left. So maybe they want to try to get to the front, but I think that's going to be the strategy for at least a couple others in here. Airtime is next. This is an American Freedom Colt. Three for five lifetime with a third place finish, and he's two for two at Oakland Park. Two for two on wet tracks, so he certainly likes wet tracks. He broke his maiden in a maiden claiming 50 on a good track at Churchill Downs last year, and his other win, um, Oakland Park in the mud, uh, first by 10 uh, at one mile on January 29th. He was claimed out of that race uh, by Robertino Diodoro, and then in his last start for his new connections, optional claiming 100,000, February 18th, mile and a 16th on the fast track. He rallied from mid-pack to get the job done there. His speed ratings are still a bit light. He's got some ability. I'm just not sure he has graded stakes ability. Six, Angel of Empire. Brad Cox trainee, and this is a son of Classic Empire. And he certainly liked the added ground last time, just like Brad Cox said he would. In his career debut, he started in a one-mile race in Indiana in the slop, and he stalked, and he won that one. Six and a half furlongs on the turf course at Kentucky Down, second time out. Way too sh short for him, probably didn't like turf. His third start at one mile at Indiana, he romped there from off the pace. The Smarty Jones stakes, his stablemate victory formation, controlled the pace. There was no way he was catching him there. And he was second that day. And then Brad Cox said, get him out to more distance and he'll do better. And that was the case in the Risen Star Stakes, that grade two and a mile and an eighth at Fairgrounds last time. He got pace help. He rallied. He won that one by a length. That was a good effort in that 14-horse field. The show finisher, two fills, came back and won the Jeff Ruby Stakes last weekend. Uh, so Angel of Empire, he's going to like the added ground of uh, Flavian Pratt. Uh, he liked the added ground of this distance last time. He should like it again. It's just a question of, is he going to get enough pace help uh, and, and be able to rally like he did last time? Rocket Ken is next for trainer Bill Mott, and this is a son of Into Mischief. And he really improved when they stretched him out. His first two sprints at seven furlongs, fifth by nine and, and a well-beaten seventh. And then in the slop at a mile and a 16th in his third start, he stalked and he broke his maiden from post 10. And then in his next start, an optional claiming race at Churchill Downs, he was second beaten a half length. Confidence game uh, won that one and race, um, and Rocket Cam was second and confidence game came back and, and he uh, performed well when he won the Rebel Stakes. Uh, Rocket Ken won his next start in the Holy Bull Stakes. Post eight there, he was stalking wide, and he won by three-quarters of a length. The pace wasn't that quick. He set a nice trip while out in the clear that day. Fountain of youth stakes. He was no match for Forte last time, but he stalked the pace, and he was second of beating more than four lengths. So he was able to beat the rest. I don't think that the Holy Bull was particularly strong. Uh, other than Forte, I don't think that the Fountain of Youth was that strong, but I like his two-turn form, and I like his tactical speed. Uh, the next one is Reincarnate, and he's 5-2 to two morning line. For trainer Tim Yakteen, this is a son of good magic, and he's run well in all six starts as he's hit the board in each of those with a couple victories. His, and they started him on turf, and they always knew he was a router uh, because he's always been in route races. His first two races were one-mile turf races for trainer Bob Baffert, and he set the pace and was second by a neck in his debut, Then he stalked, and he was second best as the favorite in his second career start. They moved him over to the main track for his third start, Fort Bragg, his stable mate, uh, was able to defeat him that day. He stalked and fell three quarters of a length short. He got the inside post in his next start at Del Mar, and he was able to go all the way and win by three quarters of a length. And then the grade three sham stakes, he was able to get into a pace battle and win that pace battle by a neck. So he showed, showed a lot of determination defeating Newgate, and Newgate there uh, was the next out winner in the Robert Lewis Stakes. And then they went uh, to the Rebel Stakes last time for Reincarnate, shipping out of Santa Anita, uh, out of the West Coast for the first time. And he ended up um, running a good race considering everything uh, that went wrong there. Uh, he caught a wet track that day, the first time he'd been on a wet track. Uh, 
and then look at the way that he ran too. He was 11 lanes back early. And if you look at all of his other races, he was never far back. He had a lot of mud kicked into his face there. He ran into some traffic trouble when he was in, it got a squeeze between a couple horses in the stretch, including Bourbon Bash, who probably caused most of his troubles that day. And then even after all that happened, he was able to recover quickly after getting into that squeeze play in the stretch. And he finished third, uh, beaten a bit more than two lengths. He was still running on at the end of that race last time. And that gives you hope that he'll be able to hold, um, handle a mile and an eighth. That last race was a mile and a sixteenth. Well, they paid 775000 for this one. This is his second start uh, in the Tim Yachtin barn. And he's versatile. And I would expect that, that Johnny V is going to try to get him more forwardly placed. Um, and I'm sure they're hoping for a fast track. But we know he handles a wet track and he can kind of do anything. Uh, the next one is King Russell. Uh, for trainer Ron Moquette, and he's 30 to 1 morning line. He's run five times with a win and two seconds. His first two career starts, he was off the board. Then he was a well beaten second uh, behind Sun Thunder on December 31st. And then in his last couple starts, uh, second by a half length and then first by a neck. And that was in a wet, uh, wet fast track and in the slop. So all of his races have been in the maiden ranks, and now he's going to step up and face winners. Uh, Rafael Bejarano will ride back, and he rides him well. I just think he's up against it from a class standpoint. He's just not fast enough at this stage. Red Route 1 for trainer Steve Asmussen, a son of Gunrunner. And he has absolutely no speed, but he has a nice finishing kick. And he's 3-1 to one morning line, and Tyler Gaffalione is going to get back aboard him. He rode him a few starts back in the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes. He only has that one win, and that one win was not on, on dirt. So he's run on dirt five times, and he hasn't won yet, but he certainly handles it. His maiden win was a, a turf race at Kentucky Downs last year. And then they put him on the road to the Derby after that, the Breeders' Futurity. He rallied from post 10 to finish third. Forte and Loggins uh, were 1-2, and he was seven lengths behind those horses. He was fifth, beating 13 lengths in the slop in the street scent stakes. But then he picked up the pace after that. In the Kentucky Jockey Club stakes, he was a close fourth, and he did not have a good trip. Instant Coffee won that one, and he came back and won the LeCompte stakes. And Red Route won with better sailing, would have probably been uh, uh, finished at a higher position. And then back-to-back runner-up finishes in the slop in the grade three Southwest Stakes, rallied from 10 lanes back. He was 19 lanes back, and he was well behind the next to last, to the next to last horse there. Uh, so in that 11-horse field, uh, that horse that was sitting in 10th uh, was way ahead of him for much of the running, and then he, he wasn't even in the frame at all, and then he made a big late run. He was second of uh, beating the length. Uh, now, the pace uh, was quick there, uh, but he was just way too far back. So maybe that's why they're putting blinkers on in here, trying to get him uh, to focus a bit more and not be as far back, but still have that finishing kick. Uh, we'll have to see how he does in here. Um, I think he's got a good shot to hit the board. I'm just not sure he's going to be able to win it. Uh, Colomio is next, and he's 30 to 1 morning line for trainer Keith, at, um, Keith Desormo, and he uh, claimed this horse for 50000 last time. He's run six times. He only has one win eligible for an entry-level spot. And that one win was on turf at Santa Anita Park last fall. And then he was um, in the uh, Cecil beat the mill stakes a grade three at Del Mar late last year. He, he ran last. And then in that last race, optional claiming race for 50000 they claimed him uh, in that one-mile uh, turf race at Santa Anita. And now they're going to throw him in here. His first two dirt races, he didn't do much. Uh, he's got um, the outside post. I don't recommend playing him in here. I just think he's in a, a tough spot in this in this race. So I'm going to go with Reincarnate on top. I just I was impressed with that run last time. All that trouble shipping for the first time. I think he's going to probably work out some kind of tactical type trip uh, in this race if he gets a clean start and a fast track. And he showed a lot of determination in that sham stakes victory. And nothing seems to bother him. Like if he gets into a pace duel, he'll fight. If he gets in trouble like he did last time from off the pace, he'll battle to the end. So he's just going to try hard. You know that that's the case, and he's fast enough to win this race. Other horses that I will use, number six, Angel of Empire, number seven, Rocket Ken, number 10, Red Route 1. We'll make a win wager on the eight, Reincarnate. We'll play an exacta keying Red Route 1 um, um, in second. That's a six, seven, eight on top of the 10. And then a trifecta key, I'm going to key Reincarnate over the six, seven, and 10. And then one more trifecta, Reincarnate on top, all in second. Red Route 1, number 10 in third. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this content. And that will wrap up my Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby videos for this week. And I'll be back next week. 
as we have more hundred point races coming up on the road to the Derby and the Oaks, the last major week uh, for prep races next weekend. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. Mm -hmm.